Welcome to Woodbridge, the best town around. My name is John McCormick. I'm the mayor of this great town. And tonight we're here for the always pleasant task of awarding the officer of the quarter. And for the second quarter, April 1st to June 30th, 2017, the uh, awarded officer is Matthew Doherty. Officer, would you please come up? I will read the important parts about uh, this proclamation. Whereas police officer Matthew Doherty, during the second quarter of 2017, Utilize, utilizing experience and training, initiated and conducted motor vehicle enforcement actions in response to calls for service, which resulted in enforcement actions to include the issuance of traffic enforcement summonses, DWI summonses, enforcement of outstanding arrest warrants, and the arrest of defendants on, on violations of New Jersey criminal statutes. And whereas during May 2017, Officer Doherty, while conducting a criminal investigation, identified and arrested a wanted fugitive from justice, which resulted in the discovery of an additional outstanding warrant of arrest and the confiscation of cocaine and illegal narcotic substance. And whereas during June 2017, Officer Doherty, while on assigned patrol responsibilities, observed a suspicious individual enter the parking lot of a township gas station, and upon further investigation was able to identify and arrest the suspect as a fugitive. Additionally, Officer Doherty, while conducting a separate motor vehicle stop, detected the odor of marijuana, which led to the arrest of the driver on charges of possession of narcotics and the issuance of motor vehicle summonses. And whereas Officer Doherty, Woodbridge Township PD, is recognized and honored before members of the Woodbridge Township Police Department, peers, community, and family for his dedication to duty and police professionalism, and is hereby named Police Officer of the Quarter, second quarter of 2017. Now, there I, Johnny McCormick, Mayor of the Township of Woodbridge, in concert with the Woodbridge Council, do hereby and the Woodbridge PD do hereby extend highest honors to Police Officer Matthew Doherty, Woodbridge Township Police Department, for his devotion to duty and commitment to the public safety of the community. Ladies and gentlemen, I say it all the time that Woodbridge has the best police department in the state, and the men and women of this force go out and prove us right every single day. As officer, congratulations. <laughs> I, I don't I want to put you on the spot. Do you want to say anything? Um, not much, but again, thank you from the council. So two years, that's the youngest guy we've ever had as officer to quarter, two years? Could be. Yeah. Could be, yeah. I don't recall anybody that young before. All right, so let's just go with it. You're the youngest one ever. Let's go with it. <laughs> I like the sound of it. Let me ask uh, uh, Police Director Hubner if you want to say a few words. Sure. Uh, I'd like to thank the mayor and council for recognizing the difficult job our officers do every day. Uh, we're really proud of Matt. The men and women of this police department do a great job, and Matt uh, proves that. Uh, congratulations. Thanks, sir. Deputy Director Misty, anything? Uh, no, just congratulations. Uh, obviously, you're well liked. I think this is the biggest turnout we've had <laughs> from your colleagues. Uh, it's always a tough choice, uh, Officer of Porter, uh, but uh, you, you definitely are deserving, and we appreciate everything you do. Thanks, sir. Our Chief Law Enforcement Officer, Mr. Hoppick. Roy Hoppick. Congratulations. Um, the director was right. It's a difficult job out there, but um, every day, you and all your fellow officers go out and do a terrific job. Thanks. All right, and uh, officer, former officer Brian Small, current councilman, you want to say anything? Congratulations, Matt. I know what uh, the task you have, and your brothers and sisters have uh, worked very hard to represent our town and proud of each and every one of you. Congratulations. Thanks. Thanks again, man. Congratulations. <laughs> to my far right, councilman at large Brian Small. To his left, first ward councilwoman Nancy Drum. To her left, fifth ward councilwoman Debbie Meehan. To her left, councilwoman at large Lizbeth De Jesus. To her left, uh, Deputy Police Director Joe Niski. To his left, Director uh, Bob Hubner. To my back left, the Third Ward Councilman Corey Spiller. To his left, Councilman at Large Kyle Anderson. And just got a phone call. I uh, hope it's important. Um, Councilman at Large Greg Ficarra. Can we have Lieutenant Keith Ferriolo from the Avenel Colonial First Aid Squad? Kerry Shirley from the Colonial First Aid Squad? Steve Weber from the Port Reading First Aid Squad? and Martha Monsek from the board of the Woodbridge Township Ambulance and Rescue Squad. And I'd like to call up a young lady who uh, coordinates our first aid squads. Uh, you been here a year yet, Laura? Uh, yes, yeah, over a year. OK, Laura started with us a little over a year ago. Um, we now have a lot to do with the operation of the squads. That wasn't the case many years ago. But uh, the squads have realized that the town's abilities uh, go beyond their own in many cases. And we've been able to use our resources to complement what they have and uh, have a very cohesive effort when it comes to first aid. And you'll hear uh, 
Councilman Small talk about that at uh, council meetings about what we've accomplished there. But a lot of it's because of Laura and the job she's done in the past year plus. So I'd like to bring up Laura Higgins and turn the microphone over to her. And should I mention Barry now or wait? Yeah, Craig's on the phone with him, so he's on his way now. Oh, he's on his way now. That's who called Greg. Okay. What's the deal? Should... I'm sorry, did you say? Yeah, is that Barry? All right. Sam, the sun's coming. Oh, the sun's coming. Oh, Sam. All right. We like her better than him anyway. Oh, Sam, not Alexandra. Oh, that's, I forgot. Alex is the daughter. I'm sorry. I go there, too. I bring my dog there, and I forgot. All right, let me ask Laura to explain um, the effort, the, explain what they donated and what they've done, and then we'll hopefully get here in time to uh, accept our congratulations. Uh, so we decided to partner up with the Woodbridge Veterinary Group um, in order to provide first aid care to the pets in town that we have. Um, Deputy Director Niski was kind of the one who gave us the idea. So the Woodbridge Veterinary Group has donated four sets of oxygen masks for pets. There are three masks in each kit, so there's a large, a medium, and a small for dogs and cats. Uh, when a dog or cat is unconscious, we can use the mask to put over their uh, muzzle. I was going to say snout, but I was corrected, um, in order to give them oxygen. Uh, and if the dog is conscious, we could do the same thing um, and we would take it from there. So what we're going to do on September 9th is host a first aid class for pets, uh, which is going to be in conjunction with community safety consultants in Metuchen. There will be two representatives for each first aid squad, as well as two from the police department and myself, so 11 total. Um, and we're going to learn basic first aid for uh, dogs and cats. Um, so we'll have four different sets of oxygen masks. One will go to each of the first aid squads, um, and that's all thanks to Dr. Edler. Okay. We should also thank uh, Detective Mark Zeno and Detective Joel Slotsberg. They're our community affairs unit, and they were very instrumental in putting this program together. Mark is here tonight, so Mark, thank you very much. Um, uh, while we're waiting for Dr. I just found out his son just became a doctor, so like, who knew that? Did we know that? I didn't know that. He just graduated in June from uh, veterinary school. Where'd he go? Would you, same place as your daughter? Ohio. Ohio. State, I believe. All right. Well, Greg Fakara's daughter just graduated veterinary school in Auburn, too, so let's hear it for Greg's daughter. <laughs> and if anybody has any more ideas as to how we can stall, please let me know. Uh, I will read the, the uh, proclamation, though. Whereas the Office of Mayor and Municipal Council for the Township of Woodbridge honors and recognizes Woodbridge Township corporate citizens, business persons, and civic leaders who embody the best qualities of public service and civic involvement and who have answered the call to serve their community. And whereas the Woodbridge Veterinary Group and Dr. Bar Barry M. Adler, DVM, has displayed the best qualities of public service by advancing a partnership program with the Woodbridge Township Police Department and the Woodbridge Township First Responder Community, which will provide emergency first aid and rescue care kits for pets suffering injury as a result of a disaster event. And whereas the Woodbridge Veterinary Group has provided pet oxygen masks and rescue kits to the Woodbridge Township First Response Community, Woodbridge PD, Avenel, Colonia, Port Reading, and Woodbridge squads, and the Woodbridge Township Office of Emergency Management, and whereas the Woodbridge Veterinary Group will assist in the provision of specialized training in emergency pet rescue procedures to representatives of each first response agency. Now, therefore, I, Johnny e. McCormick, Mayor of the Township of Woodbridge, and in concert with the Woodbridge Township Municipal Council and the Woodbridge Department, uh, Police Department and first responder community, do hereby recognize the Woodbridge Veterinary Group and Dr. Barry M. Adler, DVM, for their dedication to mission and purpose and extend best wishes and safe passage in all future endeavors and there's nobody here to accept it, so I'm going to ask you to accept it. And uh, you want to say a few words on behalf of Dr. Adler? I don't. No, I didn't think so. <laughs> anybody, uh, anybody know any jokes? <clears throat> nobody? How many will be used, uh, are, since there's four of them, are they going to go to all the different first So aid? we have four kits of three masks, small, medium, and large, and each of our four first aid squads will receive one. So the duty, the duty crew for the day will have one kit on the ambulance. Okay. Yeah. Any more questions? <laughs> Ms. Mayor, just uh, Pat Kenny's here from OEM, uh, our director of OEM. He and Laura are uh, very instrumental in running EMS day in and day out. And again, I know it was already mentioned, but Councilman Small's a big advocate on the council for, uh, for EMS, so we appreciate everything he does. Okay, now I'd like to formally present Dr. Sam Adler with the proclamation that we just read and thank him for the contribution of Woodbridge Veterinary Group, which includes uh, not only himself but his sister, 
and his father, who all run the operation. I apologize before. I didn't know you were a doctor yet. I didn't know you just graduated in June. Yeah. So when they said Sam's coming, I was thinking of Alex, because you both have names that are like ambidextrous. It can be a woman or a man. And, um, and I got confused with your sister. And then they said, you were coming, but it doesn't matter right now. What matters is you hold this proclamation, accept it with gratitude and pride, and say a few words on behalf of your, uh, your dad and your sister and the company about what this means to be able to make the donation to the town. Sure, sure. Yeah, it's uh, 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 truly an honor to be a part of this. And uh, we really appreciate the recognition. So tell me why you're here. When did you realized you were going to have to be a veterinarian because your father was. <laughs> uh, I would say when I was about five years old. Yeah. <laughs> but did you, I mean, how long have you been hanging around his office? Uh, since I was two years old. Really? <laughs> oh, and yeah, did you know yeah, as yeah. soon as you were old enough to know that you wanted to get into this line of business? Uh, yeah, I, I think I wanted to be a human doctor for a while. And, uh, you know, you hang around dad enough and, uh -huh. and he changes your mind. So <laughs> well, you got a built in, um, you got a built in business that you yeah. and your sister, yeah. you know, were right there for and you mm -hmm. can make it grow and you guys do a great job. You take care of my little dog, wizard, anybody else here have their pets? Kyle, Greg, <laughs> everybody. Wow, well, we're happy Steve, to. Debbie, everybody goes to Woodbridge Veterinary Center. Excellent, excellent. Well, so we're happy to help. So. Well, terrific. Well, congratulations. <laughs> Please tell your dad thank you very much for the I donation. Will. He's one of the good guys in town. We've known him all. All of us have known him for a long, long time. And he's one of the good guys, and uh, he's always there when somebody needs help. So please express our gratitude. I will, absolutely. Thank you. Please stand for a pledge of allegiance. In a moment of silence, remember all our men and women in the army. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Notice requirements of the open public meeting law have been satisfied concerning this meeting. The Home News Tribune and the Star Ledger posted the annual notice on December 16, 2016. It's also posted on the bulletin board of the municipal building. It should be so noted in the minutes of this meeting. Councilman Anderson. Here. Councilman Ficarra. Here. Councilwoman Drum. Here. Councilman De Jesus. Here. Councilman Spiller. Here. Councilman Small. Here. Councilman Patel. Vice President Meehan. Here. And President Delina. Here. Can I get a motion to approve the minutes from the SID budget hearings on July 25th, as well as the council meeting and executive session of same dates? Motion. Second. Any comments or questions from council? In all favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. We have two second readings today. I'm going to take them as consent. Both are ordinances with regards to KSB. The first is listed as letter A, an ordinance adopted the amended redevelopment plan titled the KSB K2 redevelopment plan. And the second is the KSB Port Reading KPR 96 redevelopment plan. Again, A and B listed on your agendas. Could I get a motion that the public hearing be opened on second and third reading for both A and B? Motion. Second. Okay. Any questions or comments from council? All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have. Public hearing is now open on letters A and B. Good evening, Council President uh, George Paul Coleman. Uh, what is exactly uh, Ordinance A in referring to how is it amended and what section of the KSB is this? This was built by the uh, Riverside Drive area and it's a minor amendment. Minor amendment. Is this for, for a parking, park, parking, housing, what? No, it's part of the industrial site. Well, there, okay. Uh, are we putting any uh, businesses there or is it going to be open space? Right now, there's no plans for either or. Okay. Mr. Mitch has the uh, amendments and stuff like that available for reviewing. Is that in, in uh, mm -hmm. room that they, that, that my office or it's found, the ordinance is found online for the last two years. But usually there's like an uh, uh, amendment A to it, and it's usually like a booklet. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, I mean, exhibit. Yeah, yeah. Exhibit, yeah, exhibits are on file in my office. Okay, 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 thank you. Any other comments on A and B? See, uh, see no comment on AMB. Can I make a motion that the public here and we close the ordinance and be adopted and it's in there for approval as required by law? Motion. Second. Any comments or questions from the council? Board of Aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Ordinances and letters C, D, E, F, and G taken up as consent. Can I get a motion that these ordinances be passed on first reading, published in the Home News Tribune on August the 11th with notice of public hearing to be held on August 22nd at 7 p.m.? Motion. Second. Any comments or questions from council? All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. 
We're going to take resolutions 1 through 26 as consent. The president asked me to read number one in full, which is titled, The Resolution Recognizing and Honoring Paul Sansone Sr. for Continued Leadership and Commitment to and Support of Woodbridge Township Military Veterans and Families and Sponsorship of the Sansone Woodbridge Veteran and Spouse Employment Assistance Center. Whereas the Mayor Municipal Council of the Township of Woodbridge <coughs> recognize the important role that the Township corporate officers and officials provide to the benefit of Woodbridge Township residents. And whereas Paul J. Sansone Sr., on behalf of the Sansone Auto Mall, has demonstrated outstanding dedication and steadfast commitment to providing Woodbridge Township veterans and families of veterans with employment opportunities in the automobile industry. And whereas Paul J. Sansone Sr., through the establishment and sponsorship of the Sansone Woodbridge Veteran and Spouse Employment Assistance Center, demonstrated an, ex an exemplary commitment to promoting the training and hiring of veterans, which has gained him national, state, county, and municipal recognition. <coughs> and whereas Paul J. Sansone Sr.'s achievements and the advancement of veterans' causes has resulted in being honored as the American Legion Employer of the Year for 2016, whereas Paul J. Sansone Sr. has established a model to emulate setting the standard of excellence and providing veterans and veterans families opportunities to become productive members of their communities. Now therefore be it resolved by the Municipal Council of the Township of Woodbridge that the Municipal Council herein congratulates and honors Paul J. Sansone Sr. for his service and leadership in the training and hiring of veterans who have courageously served our country and be it further resolved that the Council reiterates its commitment to and recognition of Paul J. Sansone Sr. and the valuable work of the Sansone Woodbridge Veteran and Spouse Employment Assistance Center. Mr. President, can I get a motion to approve the resolutions? I'll make a motion. Second. Any All comments or questions? Any comments? Second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? I believe you wanted to comment. Before uh, we move on, um, Paul could not be here tonight, but on his behalf, here is a Longtime friend, fixture of Woodbridge Township, uh, Bob Dato, who's representing Paul. Bob? Two items for the record. It's Robert Dato appearing on behalf of Paul Sansone and the Sansone Dealership Group as corporate counsel. And the second item of record is that I feel at home. Uh, You're always welcome. Thank you. Uh, Paul Sansone would like to personally thank each and every member of this council, as well as those representatives of the administration, and more specifically Mayor McCormick, in providing us with the support and assistance we needed to make these veterans hiring programs work. And we at Sansone uh, would like to express our appreciation for your commitment in providing us with uh, the path by which we found our way to engaging in hiring and training veterans in the automobile industry. Uh, so it's not only Paul Sansone Sr. that thanks you, but it's the 400 plus employees at the mall, 400. And those are individuals uh, who are there because it is that the Sansone, uh, that Sansone has been doing all the right things in conjunction with the hiring of veterans. We can make the commitment tonight that we will continue to work with the Township of Woodridge in enhancing the lives of our veterans and veterans' families to help those who've given so much and received so little. We thank you again. Good night. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. And thank you all. At this time, we will now go to the public session of tonight's meeting. I would ask any resident wishing to speak to go to the microphone. Please provide your name, and the section of the township in which you reside. The public session allows five minutes. The five minute time frame includes remarks by the speaker and any response or interaction by the council or administration. While this is a strict five minute time frame, the speaker will be allowed to complete a sentence if time runs out during mid sentence. Otherwise, there will be no extensions or allotment for additional time. Uh, good evening, Council President. Uh, Roger Bob, uh, I'd like to see you read that to a veteran that has fought in the war and 
has gave his life, some life, some lifetime stuff like that, and to come here to speak for the freedom of speech. So I think we should have an exemption for veterans, don't you think? Unlimited? No. We'll see. We'll see. I Maybe mean, we could do that, you know. Seniors and veterans. Okay. Uh, let's get right to this right now. Uh, have you been having an executive session tonight? No. Oh, good. Okay, that's great. Uh, the bikes, the two motorcycles for the uh, police uh, department, they uh, in operation yet, or we don't? No, have they're not. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Um, I shot some pictures over the council uh, drum on the uh, condition, the bad condition of Main Street over here. Uh, there was a sinkhole that opened up last week. And, I mean, it's deteriorating rapidly. I don't know who's doing the study over there or whose jurisdiction. There's a steel plate down there now. It's kind of shifted. And if you can get somebody out there to take a look at it and uh, see what's going on. Another thing, too, the lighting, okay? The lighting is bad. And we know how the... Uh, county and the state works, okay? Glacially slow. If they could get out there and put some lights underneath the bridge and on the on the off ramps, yeah, on the off ramps, and uh, light that place up up there, it's dark. Because you go under the bridge, and then all of a sudden you're by the bowling alley, it's like Las Vegas, <laughs> pulled it up, you know? So um, see if we can do anything about that. Well, before and, you go any further, I'd like to ask Councilwoman. Yeah. Yes, thank you, Council President. I received your email and your yeah. pictures, and I forwarded them all to administration, so they're working on that. And as far as the seat calls go, I just got that, so I just sent that over today as well. Yeah, I know, yeah. It, it just I know you took that on Friday at 4. Friday, like said, yeah. That was a water company did work there. They do okay. the stopgap measures and stuff well, like that. Administration yes. will work uh, on that. Look into it. Review not it. Not too good, okay. Uh, parking problem over by the Alina Manor. How are we going to address that? Do you want to address it or nothing? There's nothing right now. Right now. Okay. Well, let's see what happens with that. Staff should park over by Hope One School, and it'd be good for them to do the walk over to the building along Pennsylvania Avenue. It would be great. Um, <clears throat> okay, I'd like to congratulate. Uh, let's see what happens. Anything happen with the cop cover up? Anything? Else? Not that we're aware of. Nothing there, right? Not through the prosecutor's office. Prosecutor's office, okay. That's it. You want to read the newspaper or something. Maybe I'll ask them to read or whatever. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, that's about it. Oh, yeah, the, the library uh, ramp over there. The library <coughs> ramp. Library ramp. Over by the main. That's the one you're doing, number four? Okay. Are you guys going to rip it down or are you going to rehab it again? Because you're tossing money at it. And, it's just practical parts. So you know, are, you, are you aware of how it's going to go about the ramp? No, I thought my head comes further. Are you back to that? Sure. Yeah, all right, we'll ask him another thing over here. And, um, okay, if you're here, if you're here, okay. And, um, the uh, police camp, you got to work on it. I mean, how many times have I got to tell you again? You got to get that police camp. And uh, with the tasers that the, uh, a Woodbridge Police Department have, do they um, carry them with them or do they just use them on special uh, meat? They do carry them, yes. They do how many, how many cases we got? No, no, no. Okay, that's what Rachel's doing here. And that's about it. And remember, don't look at the sun. The eclipse is coming on August 21st and we're this crazy. So don't look at the sun. Look at the TV set or your flat screen iPod. Take care. Are there any other comments from the public? Yeah. Go right in there. Oh, sorry. Good evening, Council. My name is Evelyn. I'm from Woodbridge Township. Um, this is my first time you know, speaking in front of the Council. Um, two days ago, my husband and I, we found out that there was uh, two incidents at the train station. One of them was a theft during the daylight, and the other one was a rape of a woman. So I'm really concerned about the safety of the residents, especially women, children, and you know, who are walking home at night from the train station. And why was there no mention about this on the news? Uh, meanwhile, well, we, we do not control what the news reports or does not report. Uh, and I'm not even sure, uh, Director. Uh, there were some incidents there. Uh, that's New Jersey Transit property. We're in contact with them and we're investigating. Okay, because um, the, only, the only reason we found out about it, my husband and I took it to the train station, there was a poster at one entrance, but not the other. 
So this was almost a month ago. So it didn't go at that entrance. We would never have found out about this. And it's concerning me because I go to the train station a lot. I walk my dog that direction. And the fact that this happened and the public didn't know, know about it. I mean, I didn't know about it. None of my neighbors knew about it. And people on the train didn't know about it. So I just would like to know if there's going to be more safety. Well, the, like the director said, they were working with the New Jersey Transit on it to hopefully, you know, try to uh, have more security okay. and, and whereabout of anything that's going on. But like I said, we don't control what the news okay. reports or doesn't report. Okay, my other question to this, uh, there's a lot of panhandling going on by Quick Check. Is there going to be done anything about that as well? Um, almost every day we go there, there's people camped out, and the, the managers of Quick Check and uh, also Walgreens, they don't seem to do anything about it. Director down there? Yeah, we, uh, we're aware when they call us and we send a police car over and we usually remove them. Um, if they call, we'll be there. Oh, and, and if we see anything, if you see anything that you think is not right, call the police department. Okay, and by the time the cops show up, I mean, sometimes they're not. Sometimes there. I know, times everything. Okay, all right, uh, those are my only two questions. Thank you, Council. You're, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other comments from the public? Good evening, Council. I want to thank you for the opportunity to speak. Um, Many of you may know me over the years, and I know several of you, so um, it's great to be home. Um, I did have a few concerns regarding some of the new construction. Um, I'm sorry, my name is John Kublaskis III, uh, and I do reside in the proper. I apologize for keeping it up. I did have a few concerns regarding the construction on New Street and North William. Um, basically, the first thing is regarding the parking. I know that was addressed already. But there are a few concerns um, as far as the planning of the parking for the residents, as far as the drainage, snow removal, and it's garbage pickup as well, because these are all things that could be a potential issue. If not, the road will be a dead end. Now, on that subject of the road being a dead end, um, it's come to my attention, not since I've lived there, and the road's getting torn up, um, that it's going to be one continuous parking lot. So I understand that there's going to be a need for additional parking within the township. Um, now, there's already a parking lot that was there that's fairly new. It's been built within my lifetime. Across the street, it was cleared. If you remember, there was a very big lot there. Um, there's nothing wrong with the existing parking lot, and the new lot now could have been paved, and we could have kept the street there. Um, I, I would like to know what the emergency was to pave over that, because now you're blocking off the street, connecting my community with the main road. And the reason why I'm requesting some information as well as that we paved the street back is because it's creating a lot of extra egress on the other side streets. Second Street, Coley Street, and even New Street are very narrow roads. For anyone who's in Workers Proper, you'll know that. This is going to create additional volume, possibly more accidents, and it's a very big concern of mine because of the congestion. Now, another thing is the timeline. The community, my community, wasn't aware that the road was being, um, let's say, torn up. So the timeline of things is a concern to me because we all found out we all had something formally mailed to our homes, which is appreciated, but this was done after the fact. So I could be mistaken, and please let me know if I was, because I'm not at these meetings very often, but was there something that the residents were supposed to attend? Because I spoke to many of the residents within the community, and there was a very large concern that this wasn't a good idea. Nobody I spoke with said that there was an issue with cutting traffic. Um, as I spoke with the mayor, uh, the engineer was kind enough to take some time out of his day. Um, I spoke with both of them, and they said there was an issue regarding traffic cutting through off of Main Street, when in reality, the real traffic gets cut through on Coley Street in 2nd to beat the light. So if anything, that would help alleviate that. Now we're creating more of a, a blockage and issue. So basically what I'm saying in so many words is yeah, the timeline seems a little strange, and none of my neighbors said they complained, and I asked a lot of people. Um, and when I asked the mayor about this personally, he assured me that a lot of the neighbors complained that there was a lot of cutting through of traffic on that street. Um, I never saw a site study. I never saw traffic counters. There's, he said about 95% of people that called in complained. I wasn't offered any quantitative evidence, and I did, not, I did not see any counters on the road. So I'm not really sure where the information is coming from, but I would just, I would greatly appreciate it if you would all reconsider it um, as fellow residents of the township. And you know, my community would appreciate it very much as well, because 
that is causing a very large disruption. And I would just also like to know if that is the intended purpose of that lot, is just one large parking lot, or if there's something else planned for it. Well, I don't have the answer for that, um, but I do know the engineering department and also the mayor's office have been working on issues that you have addressed, and I believe it's still in progress. Am I correct, Mr. Mayno? That's correct. That's correct. So we're still trying to work with some of the issues that have been presented to us, uh, lot you, and it's, it's, it is on goal. Well, at the moment, I mean, if I go over time, please let me know. I don't want to take a comment away from anybody else. But at the moment, the road is torn up, and it feels as if I, mean, I believe that your issue, the main issue, is the parking, correct? Well, the first thing is the parking, but my most, the fact that the road is closed is causing a very big disruption within the neighborhood with traffic. No, I was I was quoted that that it was complained on or complained about by the citizens when I haven't spoken to one citizen that had an issue with the traffic. And I think there's only three or four houses on the road anyway. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I just, uh, well, he's having a, uh, he's had an issue with, with the street. It's under construction. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's under construction. If, if you if you'd like, after the meeting, you can speak to Mr. Landolfi and our engineer. I appreciate. It. I'm aware it's under construction. And I live on the street. I was just asking why that would not be under construction when you had two lots across the street from each other when you could have two separate parking lots. The only thing I can think of is, with all the resources that we're using to raise the grade of the land and make it one continuous parking lot, it could possibly be used for something else. I'm, thinking, I'm wondering if the end result is going to be a parking lot there or if we're going to build some sort of structure on it. Okay. That, that's what it looks like it's being set up. I will ask that at the end of the meeting, you would speak to Mr. Landolfi and our engineer. Excellent. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other comments from the public today? Ann Kozar, Seaborn property owner. First, I'd like to say Mr. Delina was correct at the uh, July 25th council meeting. I did speak for five minutes before asking him to allow me one additional question. Although I time myself at home, being nervous added to my delivery time at the hearing, at the meeting. Public speaking isn't easy for me, and I hope Mr. Delina will consider this before denying another taxpayer a question that might add a minute to the council meeting. Instead of allowing my question, he used the minute to say my comments, quote, were the same as last week. My topic was the same. My comments were not. Even an audience member attending the meeting shouted out that he was incorrect. Mr. Delina's demeanor was unprofessional. I have nothing to gain in trying to reestablish this free appeal venue for Woodbridge residents. That ship has long sailed for my family. I've chosen to speak out because no resident should have to spend the money my family had to spend to get the relief they were entitled to under the law. Woodbridge residents deserve better from this administration, and I'm trying to see that they get it. It's just as simple as that. Hopefully, Woodbridge residents will contact their councilman or the mayor to push for this free appeal venue. As I've stated previously, our zoning board members are not elected. They are appointed by the mayor. They have no legal expertise or land use knowledge. Woodbridge needs a local review board to oversee our zoning board's decisions. No one should have to spend $10,000 out of their own pocket because our board made the wrong decision. That being said, I'd like to ask a few questions. Is there anyone on the council who's opposed to reestablishing this free appeal venue? I will ask that on behalf of the council. At this time, it's not being considered. Why? Because it's something that was a process years ago that the council changed, and at this point, it's not being considered. So it has been discussed since I spoke at yes. the meeting? And you decided it's not even in contention? At this point, no. Do you think it's fair that a resident has to spend $10,000 for Superior Court? No, it's not. But we do have trust in our boards, whether it be the zoning board or the planning board, the people that are on it. 
Well, they were wrong three times in my case. It cost me a lot of money. You think that's fair? How about all these other residents who don't have the money to put it out? I mean, how can you say something's dead like that and, and just flat out say you're not going to do it? You asked me a question and I answered it. We're not considering it at this time. Who made the determination to make Superior Court a residence only zoning board appeal option? There used to be, you, you guys at the council used to review it. Many, many years ago. Right, and it didn't work out. But who made that determination to make the Superior Court a uh, residence only option? I don't recall. Can you find out for me, please? Oh, I'll look into it. Okay. And can I also have, there, there has to be a write up or something when it was you on the council who were reviewing these decisions. It must have been a procedure. I really don't remember us at that point doing any reviews. I know at that time, or back then, it was an option, but I don't recall. Can you find out for me, please? Uh, is there any way this question could be on an upcoming ballot so that Woodbridge residents could vote on it? I'll ask the law department. Thank you, I would appreciate that. And um, the only thing I can tell you, uh, the public, is that it, it's very difficult to spend. Three times I had this room on one property. I've been at many zoning board meetings where the decision was incorrect and the people can't do anything about it. And it's very unfair that you, you have to spend that type of money and you sit up there and you just say, hey, we're not considering it. Well, uh, there should be a process. Who discusses it and made that decision? Well, there is a process. That's why we have a zoning board and a planning board. Right. That is their decision. But they have, you know what, they have no kind of uh, legal knowledge, no nothing. I mean, they, they just pick the uh, stuff out of thin air. Council President, I, I, I don't sit on the zoning or planning, but I am on the, the house. By the way, Time is up, so Mr. Councilman McCarr, the, the boards all have to go to training. Is it, I mean, it's no they different than zoning and planning board. So they, they are exposed to the laws and, and the way to interpret them. Plus, they also have professional counsel at those meetings. So you have I, I, I hear what you're I hear what you're saying, but I, I tend to object that they they don't have any training. I guess is the thing I'll get hung up on because. I know on the board I'm on, we, uh, in essence, have to take uh, five or six what, it, what appeared to be like college courses to me. And that well, was on a different board. I went to one course. I attended with two uh, zoning board members. Matter of fact, I know quite a few members who were on the council, I'm sorry, not the board, uh, on the uh, zoning board. And I attended one class at the uh, school. And it was just a general basic thing. It wasn't anything intense. But I mean, they have no legal knowledge. I know Mr. Casey is the board attorney, and he sits up there with the people. But I'm telling you, a lot of times the decisions are wrong, and the public has no recourse. And it's very unfair that you can just sit there and say, no, we're not going to do it. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other comments on the public? Seeing none, I have a motion on the public portion of the meeting to close. Second. Any questions, comments? Favor, At this time, we will now go to our agendas. And I will go to the Greenway, Middlesex County Greenway. One announcement I have is that Middlesex County Greenway is putting up an app, a Middlesex County New Interactive Map, I mean, NAP, app <laughs> enables you to explore the sites and businesses along the Middlesex County Greenway. Now you can locate stores, restaurants, bus stops, and from more from your favorite mobile device, and also get the latest weather, news, and other updates on the Greenway. You could go to www.middlesexcounty.nj.gov and search Greenway to download the app. And it's very helpful because there are a lot of different businesses between Fords and Metuchen and Edison. And that's all I have, and I'll go to Council Vice President Meehan. Uh, thank you. I'm going to go down to number five, and that is on my agenda for AEDs, which are automated external defibrillators. I just want to give you an update on those, what the township's been doing. Um, 
Sudden cardiac arrest kills nearly 300,000 people each year, striking persons of any age, gender, or health. The, survi the survival rate of sudden cardiac arrest is only 5%, but improves over 90% if the victim receives defibrillation through an AED within the first minute. In fact, up to 50% of victims would survive if an AED was used within five minutes. Last year, during a basketball game, a 15-year-old Colonia High School student collapsed during a game against Edison High School. Luckily, the school was equipped with an AED, and quick action taken by the coaches saved his life. Being proactive to keep our children safe in the township, we have implemented the AED program throughout the township. And I just want to give you an update what we've done so far. Recently, we received 36 of these state-of-the-art PowerHeart G5 units. 23 units are designated for township buildings, some of which have already been installed. 12 backpack units are going out to recreation teams. It will look like this, we're a little happy. But this is what the um, coaches will carry, right? If it's not already in place there. Um, we have 22 trained township employees and 28 coaches throughout the professional um, that have been trained by an organization named Team Life, with more to be trained this fall. I'd just like to thank the administ uh, administration, especially Director Simaluka and John Cook, who have been working diligent diligently on this program in place. These AEDs certainly could save either a child or an adult's life one day, so I appreciate all the hard work you've been doing. And then lastly, number 16, I just want to go down and remind our Colonia Family Day is this Saturday. It will be, registration is at 11 o'clock. If you have a wiffle ball team, give us a call soon because we're almost done. Uh, we're almost filled up. If you want to come and just have a barbecue, um, it starts at 12 o'clock. It's $10 per person, and all the money we raise is going to go to get a wheelchair for a young boy from Columbia. So that's all I have. Thank you. Councilwoman Jerome. Thank you, Council President. Uh, a few announcements. The Woodbridge American Legion Post 87 is collecting cookies for the troops. They're um, asking for donations of store-bought cookies and cake mix, and they can be dropped off at 314 Berry Street in Woodbridge by Wednesday, September 6th. So all your efforts will be helpful to send that out to the troops. And a save the date for the annual Elks soccer shoot is going to be Friday night at Woodbridge High School, and then it's going to be on September 29th for girls and boys ages 6 to 13. It's a free event, and it's always a lot of fun, so we hope you get a good turnout again. And going to number four, um, the, the Downtown Merchants Association have their annual uh, car cruise next Wednesday night. Starts at 6 o'clock down Main Street in Woodbridge. It's always a fun time. And 97 Main Street Driven Gym is hosting a women's self-defense class taught by a current UFC flyweight contender, Caitlin Cook again. And that is going to be at 1 p.m. on Saturday the 26th. It's a free event, so hopefully we can get out there and show our support and learn a little self-defense. Uh, the Chairman's Awards Dinner for the Chamber of Commerce is an annual event. Uh, and it is on Wednesday, October 18th. So if you can mark your calendars, we have um, a lot of community um, recognition as our honorees. The William E. Short Citizen of the Year is going to Eric Legrand, Corporate Citizen of the Year, Rottenberg Merrill, and there are many other seven or eight honorees. And we're looking for sponsorships. If you can call the chamber at 732. 636-4040, and they're also sponsoring an annual Ladies on Main event on September 25th. Um, you can get the details on the website. We're going to be going up and down Main Street to the Woodbridge Art Gallery, painting uh, wine glasses. We're going to Vito Massa Salon and Spa and getting many spa services, and Floral Expressions is going to be designing a floral arrangement. Um, so it's a lot of fun, and we end up at El Costello's for a nice dinner, and it's $50, $50 per person. And down to number 15, the Buy Local program. Uh, Councilwoman Mann and I uh, head the Buy Local program out of the Sustainable um, Green Committee, and our next meeting is September 12th at 5 p.m. You can contact myself or Councilwoman Mann if you're interested in joining us. We'll be discussing our holiday shopping initiative, which is called I Took the Pledge. We will be out promoting it to our residents. When you sign up to take the pledge, you'll receive a red canvas tote bag, um, and it'll be supporting our economy and our environment. This initiative is a personal commitment 
to support our Woodbridge business community. So we appreciate you taking the pledge. We're working on getting it online, and um, we're hoping that more people in our town support our local businesses and buy local for the, um, for the holidays. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Anderson. Thank you, Council President. Uh, for item number one, I would also like to echo Councilwoman Meehan's uh, sentiments regarding the AED. Um, as a member of the WTYRC and president of co-president of the uh, uh, Woodbridge Broncos, I would like to thank uh, Rec Department Director uh, Vito Simaluka and John Cook for the use of the AED. Um, we have received ours and uh, we have the backpack uh, and I think it's great. Um, we're able to uh, have a little bit of added security uh, knowing that um, we have that unit at our games and our practices. So thank you very much and for spearheading that as well, uh, Councilwoman Meehan. Um, going down to number two, our job banks. Um, I would like to uh, reiterate um, Insight uh, Staffing, which is our new substitute teacher partnering uh, partner with Woodbridge Township. If you go on our Employment Opportunity uh, Center on our township website, you can uh, be linked right into the, uh, to the website for Insight so that you can uh, apply for positions within the township as substitute teachers. So if you're an as aspiring substitute teacher, this is the sole resource uh, that Woodbridge Township uh, Board of Education is using. There are positions within the uh, Woodbridge Center right now. Uh, they are looking for operations manager, uh, maintenance mechanic uh, at BASF, FedEx, the WIC company, um, Chick-fil-A, Lightbridge Academy, Farmers Insurance is presently hiring as well. Um, Woodbridge Center Mall, Associate Operations Manager, Position, a Middlesex Water, Acrobat Outsourcing, Kinder Pediatrics, Central uh, Jersey Federal Credit Union, CPV, Woodbridge Energy Center, Tommy Maloney's, PSC and G, Buffalo Wild Wings, Joe Canals, Miller's Ale House, Vantage Apparel, Boscoff's, Bayshore Recycling, BCB Bank, Prudential, Northfield, Lowe's, and Gen Limousine are all hiring. So if you're out of work right now, please consider our website. They are looking specifically for people that are, reside within Woodbridge Township, and um, you can post your, uh, post your application and your resume on our website, and your resumes will be considered. We have a number of success stories that are on our website. I'm going to hold on item number three, item number four, and item number five. Item number six, the Woodbridge Township Hall of Fame. The dinner is October 8th, 5 p.m., and tickets are $50 and can be reserved by sending to Woodbridge Township Athletic Alumni Association, care of Woodbridge Rec Department, 600 Main Street, Woodbridge, New Jersey, 07095. This is where we will be honoring our past uh, athletes uh, from all three Woodbridge Township high schools. Uh, in various sports, in their accolades that they did in the high school or beyond if they went on to college or the professional level. Um, my high school uh, team, uh, 1978 uh, Woodbridge uh, Kennedy High School football team is being honored. Long, long time coming for those guys. And I would like to also uh, recognize Councilman Ficarra, who is also a member of the board uh, for, um, for the council or for, for the um, Hall of Fame Committee. I'm going to ha hold on item number eight, nine, and 10 through 13. So that is all I have, thank you. Thank you. Councilman Patel. Thanks, Council President. A few announcements first for Councilman uh, Patel, who's, who's obviously out today. Just some public service announcements uh, in the Island section of our community, specifically on Oak Tree Road. Uh, on August the 13th is the Indian Independence Celebration Day Parade. That parade begins in Edison around 2 p.m. and then it comes down to our end of the town in Island. So it is a very large event for that community and it does tend to uh, slow up traffic. So again, please be aware, August 13th, starting at 2 p.m. in Edison and working our way. Um, and then the following week on August the 20, 20th is the Pakistan Day Parade. That parade begins on our side of, of, um, 
of the, um, the two towns at 1.30, approximately 1.30, and ends up in Edison. So um, to the, those two communities, very big days, big parades, and a lot of traffic, so please be aware of it. Moving quickly into my agenda, um, Woodbridge Community Center number one, limited space available for the fall preschool registration at Highland Grove. Um, if you're interested, please call 732-596-4170, and I want to emphasize limited. Um, there's still opportunities for our summer camps that are going on. There's still a lot of summer to go. At least that's what my wife tells me. Um, and there's an opportunity to join the pools and stay, stay cool. Uh, one of the, the, the nicest gems in town is behind our community center, and that's our Skyland mini golf and batting cages. Um, please know that there is activities behind that community center uh, and try to get out there. It is a fun time for all. Uh, moving down to uh, the senior, we have our Senior Olympics, and it is the 11th consecutive year that we're hosting it. The dates are September 8th and 9th, but more importantly, uh, seniors from our town can register for three events for $5. That's a $25 saving. I've been announcing that for quite a while now, but we're running out of time for our seniors to take advantage of that. So again, September 8th, 9th, and 10th for the Senior Olympics here in Woodbridge, and the big discount goes through August, and that's uh, $5 for three events. Coming up on uh, September the 3rd is the annual, um, 22nd annual, Sam, it's a little thing, I'll hold it up, but the Woodbridge Crossroads race, the pamphlets are out. I know Mr. Haggerty uh, has it, or it's going up on our, our website under uh, around Woodbridge Township. It's a 10K race and it's a 5K race. Uh, this year it's gonna be over by the Alvin P. Williams Park and the Sea Warren along the waterfront, and I think the runners appreciate that because of the cool breeze off the water. And not too far thereafter is the ninth annual uh, Woodbridge Bike Tour, the Tour to Woodbridge. There's a 15-mile route and a 30-mile route. The benefactors this year are the Girl Scouts, and that is the last Sunday in September. That is September 24th. Uh, registration begins at the club at Woodbridge on Main Street at 7, and the run starts off at 8 a.m. So some nice ways to uh, recreate in our town and, and do some nice things for our town. That's all I have, Council President. Thank you. Thank you. Councilwoman De Jesus. Thank you, Council President. Moving down to item number nine, Hispanic Heritage Month. Please save the date. Um, the festival will be at Parker Press from 12 to 6, October 1st, which is a Sunday. El mes de la herencia hispana lo celebraremos octubre primero, el domingo de 12 a 6 en el Parque Parker Press aquí en Woodbridge. Moving down to item number 10, the Barron Art Center. The BAC will be hosting Spotlight on Norman Rockwell Art and History Exhibit, featuring pieces from the collection of Colonia resident Jack Cassidy. The show is on view from August 12th through September 1st, with a reception on Tuesday, August 15th from 7 to 9th. Please call 732-634-0413 with any questions. Item number 11, the Free Public Library of Woodbridge. All Woodbridge Township Libraries will be hosting a 15-week ESL conversation group starting the week of September 11th. Registration is a must, and it must be done in person at the main library on August 23rd at 5 p.m. Please call Melissa Bernstein of Literacy, New Jersey for more information at 732-906-5456. And this is a great opportunity for any Woodbridge Township resident that is um, willing to learn English as a second language. So if you know anybody, please encourage them to attend these um, classes. Thank you. That is all that I have. Thank you. Councilman Spiller. Thank you, Council President. Item number one on my agenda, congratulations to Kelly and Anand, two recent Colonia High School graduates, on receiving the 2017 Earl and Marge Runkle Avenel Community Day Memorial Scholarship. The scholarship was awarded to a graduating boy and a girl who live in Avenel and are furthering their education. Kelly and Anand were both members of the National Honor Society and participated in numerous extracurricular activities. The, scho <clears throat> excuse me, the scholarship was named in memory of Earl and Marge Runkle, who were longtime supporters of Avenel as well as the township and we're founding members of Avenel Community Day. I know they're looking down proudly at Kelly and Anon. Look out for the next edition of the corner uh, and there's more information on that. Uh, also item, on item number seven, we are making good progress on the renovations at Cypress Recreation Center. While the work is being completed, our house will be using five branches from September 1st to November 1st. Founded in 1980, our house 
is a private organization that provides residential in innovative day program employment and recreational services to individuals with developmental, developmental disabilities. Um, that's all on my agenda. If I could just uh, miss one note, revert back to resolutions. I want to thank the administration uh, for putting forth resolution number 23. Uh, it's a piece of property uh, down the main quarter of Route 1, and uh, it's just it's not a pretty sight. It's not fair to the residents. So anything we can do to move forward, that's greatly appreciated. Thank you. That's all. Councilman Small. Thank you, Mr. President. My agenda is in order. I just want to give a, uh, a thank you to our township engineer, Mr. Gellin. As you drive around town, you see there's a lot of road projects going on, making improvements to our streets and curbs and sidewalks. I received a phone call from a resident uh, in Port Reading uh, that a street was getting redone. The contractor uh, made a mistake. I happened to see Mr. Gellin in the middle of uh, New Dover Road getting dirty and in the dust and I stopped and I saw him and we discussed it and it was rectified five minutes later. So I just wanted to say thank you. That's all I have to see. Thank you. Mr. Mitch. My agenda is in order. Thank you. We'll go now to the administration. And oh, Mr. Wayne Dalton. Thank you, Council President. We have a relatively late agenda this evening. Uh, we will have some uh, purchasing uh, resolutions for your next meeting. We're going to request a word of contract for the Community Center Moisture Protection Renovation, a uh, word of contract for the Cypress parking lot. Um, uh, I think uh, you heard about that a little bit earlier. Also, uh, flip a bid for a word of uh, purchase of police vehicles. Have a little housekeeping uh, uh, ratification of tax court appeal judgments and a permit, uh, par uh, parking permit refund. One item not on my agenda uh, that we're going to ask you to pass a resolution on is uh, a resolution authorizing us to submit a regional transportation alternative grant. Um, if awarded, that grant would enhance our bike lane uh, project throughout the community. Um, that's all I have. Uh, Council President also be doing public work, so perhaps I should uh, just right, jump down right there. Um, the only thing uh, that we have under public works is a standard uh, development release. Um, th uh, and this would be for ins uh, out of the inspection escrow for 100 Essex Ave. Um, that's all the public works has to see. Thank you. Go to police, Director Hopkins. Thank you, Council President. A proposal to uh, make the length of Woodward Center Drive a 25 mile an hour speed zone, the length of Wallway Avenue a 30 mile an hour speed zone. I have the addition of the handicap spot on Edgar Street and uh, Woodbridge. I believe in your packets you have an addition for Tulip Drive. That's withdrawn. Uh, we're removing handicap spots that are no longer in use on Richdale Avenue and Woodbridge and Tulip Drive and Fords. And we have a change in the placard, uh, handicap placard uh, cards on two spots on Walter Drive. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Go to Health Department, Mr. Green. I don't have anything tonight. Thank you, Council President. Mr. Nothing to s this evening. Thank you, Council President. Thank you. Planning and Development, Ms. Lesky. Thank you, Council President. Just our standard five weekly refund resolutions. Thank you. Thank you. Nothing this evening. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye.